Sounds like something's loose in it. Today is not really a bold project as such. It's more of a, it's not even, what would you call it? How's it guys and welcome to another episode of Bird and Bulls. Today is not really a bold project as such, it's more of a, it's not even, what would you call it? It's not even a repair, it's actually an unboxing and we're going to be unboxing this. A little bit of uh, background uh, as to what we're going to be unboxing today. Uh, a couple of years ago we had a car, we've still got the same car actually, and uh, we had some sound in the car and somebody broke in and they stole all the sound out of the car. So if that's you, Thanks for that. Um, really don't appreciate it. But uh, it's a couple of years down the line and we've decided now to replace some of the sound. Um, well, it, we, we replaced it back then, but uh, we've decided to upgrade it a little bit. So that's what this is here today. I ran down to the shop a few days ago. I shouldn't say a few days ago because it was actually yesterday and um, bought one of these. It's a Rockford Fosgate amplifier. I was going to go for something a little bit smaller and less expensive uh, but the guys at the at the shop convinced me to rather go for the correct item. What we've got is a nice little Rockford Fosgate amplifier. Now this is the model T400 XDAD. It's a class D amplifier um, which I uh, can't remember what it means <laughs> but <laughs> overall it's very powerful for its size. Basically it's a 400 watt by four channel. We won't be using all four channels, we'll be using two of the channels and then bridging another two. Uh, but that's for another video, um, so come back for that. But before we open the box, uh, what has it got here? Um, there's the, the model number, so it is actually a genuine product, a genuine Rockford product. It says designed and engineered in Arizona, USA, but then underneath it it says made in China. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> take that for whatever it is. It's manufactured day. Jeez, this is quite old actually. It was manufactured on the 24th of December 2015. So this model or this actual amplifier is three three years old, almost three years old already. So, uh, but it's still brand new. It's sealed, so we shouldn't have any problems. Overall, the packaging is actually really nice. It's a it's a nicely printed box, um, but that's not why we buy it. So let's get into it. So what do we have in the box? We've got a looks like an installation guide, that way around maybe, um, it's not too important for now. And this is actually something that I was uh, quite interested in. As far as I know, uh, each Rockford Fosgate amplifier comes with its own, what does it say, certificate of, of performance verification. So every single amplifier that they produce, uh, once it's produced and it's ready to go, it's tested and measured, there's various things that are measured, and um, then they give you a certificate sort of, you know, verifying that it sort of is what it actually is. Now, this is claimed as a 400 watt amplifier, but it's actually 531 watts RMS. So 531 watts RMS at 2 ohms. I'm going to be running everything at 4 ohms, so it's actually 449 watts, um, which is still more than what they claim. They only claim 400 watts. Um, so Rockford, very good on you. And the amplifier itself, there it is. These are some of the installation cables. Uh, we'll have a look at those shortly. There's, uh, there's some more and some of the power cables and it also comes with a setup disc. Um, I don't know who uses CDs these days, but uh, I suppose, you know, for car audio, uh, people still use them. Uh, actually, I need to be honest, I don't really know a hell of a lot about car audio. I'm more of kind of a studio and, and uh, PA type of guy, but yeah, I suppose there's, it's never too late to learn. Wow, you get 24 tracks of a whole lot of test tones and I don't know, there it is there. <laughs> you can have a look at it. So, let's get rid of the box. It's actually packaged very well. This is, um, yeah. And it also looks like the amplifier. There we go. It's uh, sort of vacuum packed or vacuum sealed. My overall impression so far, well maybe what I should do is uh, let's open it. Let's uh, sort of take the plastic off. <laughs> There's the amplifier itself. Um, now, I've just realized <laughs> this was a bit of a rush video and I forgot to put the microphone on top, <laughs> on top of the camera. <laughs> so, the audio that you're hearing now is just from 
the, the internal microphone on the camera. So um, let me go and get the actual microphone and see if it's any better. I'll be right back. So there we go, back online. Um, using the external microphone now. I don't know, does it make any difference? Does it sound any better? Let me know in the comments below. And hopefully next time I don't forget to put the microphone on the camera. Naughty Grant. So, back to our amplifier. First impressions on the build quality. It is really nice. It's very sturdy. Um, this is kind of this is all aluminium. It's got plastic end caps. Um, it looks like it is. Uh, it's got a black anodizing, which is really nice. And I don't know the Rockford Fosgate little sign there. Probably like chromed plastic. Um, but yeah, overall, it actually looks and feels really solid. Pretty much all of their products are, are very well built, uh, very solid items. That's why you pay so much for them. On the front we've got our little control panel. We've got front and rear inputs. The input, the, the gain adjusters. Uh, we've got the EQ on uh, either left and right, or front and rear should I say. And then we've got the frequency, I think it's for your low pass filter, what is that? And over here we've got our 2 and our 4 channel little switch. And oh there it is there. So you select either all pass, uh, low pass or high pass. Um, and then you set your actual frequency. Something nice that this amplifier does have, and I read about this, it's got clip lights for the input and the output. So uh, you can actually see when the signal is coming in from your head unit or CD player or whatever you want to call it, um, if that gain is turned up too much or if that volume is turned up too much, the clip light on the, on the input side of the amplifier will come on and it's telling you, listen, that, that is clipping, it's too, the, the signal is too high. And then also on the output stage, um, that tells you uh, if your amp is clipping, as we all know, well maybe some of us don't know, but clipping is a bad thing. So on the left hand side we've got the inputs front and rear, that's where these, well, these things plug in. And then on the other side we've got our um, B plus ground and remote, so that's where our positive, our ground and our remote wire goes on. And then our speaker connections in there, um, that's, that's these. On the back of the unit they've got the input harness, it's kind of just a little picture of how to connect it up. And uh, for the wiring side, for the for the power side, uh, or the speakers, that's where that's where it goes. This is probably something that's quite important. Uh, impedance, 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 impedance. I don't know. Yeah. Impedance stability is uh, stereo two ohms or bridged mono four ohms. So if you're going to bridge this entire sounds like something's loose in it. Anyway, <laughs> if you're going to bridge this entire uh, amplifier so into one channel, then it's only stable at 4 ohms. So anything lower, maybe 2 ohms or 1 ohm, uh, you're going to get distortion and you could possibly damage the amplifier. Uh, or if you're going to sort of bridge 4 channels into 2 channels, then it's stable down to 2 ohms, uh, which, is, which is quite nice. These clip indicators, um, they are dual colored light. It's a blue and a red light. And when they flash or do whatever they do, it means certain things. And it actually tells you on the back of the amplifier, uh, the output clipping indicators, there's a blue, uh, blue, red, and a red. If you're setting it up for music or with a test tone, um, the indications, that's what you're going to get. I see it's also got uh, little fans in here. I remember reading about that. So this amp is uh, sort of force cooled or it's cooled by, by fans. Um, it's got all of its MOSFETs sort of mounted on rails, on, on cooling rails over here. And then it's got two fans that, that, from what I believe, that blow air through and it cools kind of the rails. So it helps cool the amplifier. Looking at the, the wiring, this is the speaker, here we go, these are the speaker wires. So they go, they go in the back there. I must say I'm a little bit disappointed. They are not very thick gauge. Now, I don't know, maybe it says on the wire. The speaker connection wires are only they 16 gauge, so it's not very thick. Um, really, I would have expected some bigger contacts. Um, look, I'm sure Rockford has done their homework, and it probably is thick enough, but I would have liked to see thicker wires. Another thing that I noticed, just looking at the input sort of wiring, um, there it is over there. So the input side, kind of this little plug, just plugs in. And here's your sort of input RCA connectors. This comes from your head unit or whatever, you, whatever you're using. Um, so you can see a certain section of it over there is screened. That's uh, normally the type of wiring you would use in front of any amplifier. It doesn't matter if it's car audio or 
studio sound or PA sound, you always want to use screen cabling um, up to the preamp side of an amplifier. So that's good, but then this section over here is not screened. This is just standard standard wiring. I mean, really, guys, come on! I can see what you've tried to do. Um, it's I think it's designed so that you can cut this wire off and you can use either a low input or sort of from your radio, from RCAs from your radio, or you can cut these and you can use kind of the speaker connections. Um, use the proper connections, or at least put two of these plugs in. Uh, one that's got screen cables right into the amplifier, and then another one that's just I don't know like that. So not too impressed with that. That's about it. I think I've covered mostly everything about the amplifier. It's tested from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Oh, uh, I need to mention, and I think this is pretty much a standard for most car amplifiers, that um, all these power sort of ratings, these watt ratings, these RMS ratings that we that we see, uh, they are all tested at uh, whatever sort of uh, impedance, two ohms or four ohms or one ohm, but that's up to or I should rather say that's at 1% total harmonic distortion. 1% of total harmonic distortion at the kind of wattage that they're talking about here is quite high. Um, for example, I'm used to, with my half hour stuff and with the studio stuff, uh, the amplifiers are rated kind of at the, the uh, constant output wattage at 0.01% total harmonic distortion. Um, so, I don't know, a bit of useless information, it probably doesn't matter yeah, in car audio, I don't know, I was just expecting some better figures, but uh, overall I think these are really good amplifiers, or from what I've told, I've never, been, I've never used one before. So, in the next video, come back for that, uh, we're going to install this into the car. If you like the video, hit the like button, the little thumbs up button. If you're not subscribed, uh, please subscribe, it helps me kind of keep going with these videos, and if you have any comments, let me know in the comment section below. I always like to hear from you guys, yeah, otherwise we'll see you next time. Cheers.